Hi there, in today's video I'm going to be talking about 10 things that you can declutter before the new year. I wanted to make this video to help those of you who want to start decluttering but aren't sure where to start. It can be really overwhelming and I know even by the end of the year and especially around Christmas time when there's so much stuff coming into your home from family, from friends and you're gifting your kids toys and things like that, it can get quite overwhelming with the amount of stuff that ends up in your house at the end of the year. But it's also a very busy time of the year as well so I know that you may not have a lot of time to start decluttering so I wanted to put together this list of 10 easy things that will help you quickly get started decluttering just to help you get started and to give yourself a little bit of space back in your house straight away. If you're new to my channel, my name's Mel. I do a lot of organizing and decluttering videos and I'm basically producing weekly content to help you to simplify your life as a busy parent. I publish new content every week, so if that is what you're interested in, click the red subscribe button below and I'd love to have you join me on my YouTube journey. And I've also recently started a blog so I'll be posting extra tips on my blog and just thoughts about minimalism and a bit of background about how I got started in becoming a minimalist. So if that's what you're interested in as well, I'll leave a link for you in the description. My first tip for something to declutter straight away are cardboard boxes. So you may have gotten Christmas or birthday gifts or just bought some stuff throughout the year and you're holding on to the boxes in case you want to move house or you want to sell the object and you want to have the box but I'm telling you it really makes no difference if you move house you'll be putting it in a moving box anyway and you'll have you know paper and bubble wrap and all that kind of stuff to pad it out and keep it safe so there's no point in keeping the box for whenever you may move for instance I've been in this house for a few years and I'm not planning on moving anytime soon so I got rid of a lot of boxes for things like my appli kitchen appliances, my kettles toys for the kids, things like that, I've found that when it comes to selling things as well, it doesn't really make a difference whether you have the box or not. So get rid of those boxes. Number two, instruction manuals for things that you no longer own. So recently I did a huge paper purge and that included instruction manuals. So what I did is I set aside the instruction manuals in a big pile for the appliances I already have and what I'm planning to do is look through and see if I even need the instruction manual to start with and then for the ones that I still think I do want the instruction manual, I'll go and look up and see if there's a copy online, a digital copy that I can download so I can ditch the paper copy. But what you can get rid of straight away are instruction manuals of things that you no longer have in your house. So these might be appliances that broke. So we had an espresso machine that broke and we bought a new one and I found the manual and I got rid of that. So things like that that you no longer own, those are things that you can just chuck in the recycling bin. Number three, reusable shopping bags. In Australia this year, the major supermarkets, Coles and Woolworths, got rid of single-use plastic bags and now you have to pay for the heavier duty reusable plastic bags. The problem is whenever my husband goes to the supermarket and sometimes myself I've been guilty of this, I've forgotten to take my reusable bag so I end up buying another one or two bags and bringing them home. So at the end of the year I've just ended up with way too many reusable bags and what I've been using them for are things like if I sell a toy or something online I'll put it in that bag and then that's one bag gone but I've just ended up with way too many. So what you can do is you can actually put these on freebie sites so that people who need some bags for things, they may be moving or they just might need some bags and they don't want to pay at the supermarket for reusable bags for their groceries, you can put them on freebie sites and just give them away or just give them away to someone you know, a friend or a neighbour. Number four, declutter your handbags, your purses, your backpacks, briefcases, satchels, Whatever bag you use on a daily basis, go through your bags and declutter the rubbish. I went through the bag that I use for work, my handbag, and I found so many old tissues. This is so gross. And just the empty plastic from the little tissue packets as well. So I got rid of all of those. I got rid of some old cough lozenges. So when I've had a sore throat or had a cold, you know, I've got old cough loz lozenges in there that have expired or I've got like the empty packets from those things. I don't have a lot of stuff in my bag anyway, but you just get little bits of dust and rubbish in your bag, so it's good to go through and empty that out and vacuum it out. And it's just a nice thing to do at the beginning of the year so that you start off the new year with a nice, clean, freshly packed 
backpack or handbag. Number five, so for kids, school bags and daycare bags, make sure you go through and declutter those. If the bags are really worn, you might want to buy a new one altogether. But I've decided I won't just make it a habit just to automatically buy a new daycare bag or school bag for my kids at the beginning of the year. I'll actually look at it and see it may be a bit beat up and warm, but unless there's something really wrong with it and like there's a major hole or something where stuff is going to fall out, I won't just replace it because it's the beginning of the year. I'll keep it and they can keep using it until it actually is at the end of its life. But go through and you know you can give the bags a bit of a wash, you can hair wash them, you can um, wash them down with like a cloth and soapy water and you can vacuum the bags out, get rid of the old artwork, make sure there's no leftover food in there. Especially in Australia, we are on summer holidays now, summer school holidays, so the kids have several weeks off school. So you don't want to get to the beginning of the year and find there's a mouldy old banana in the bottom of the bag. So definitely make sure you clean it out and make sure there's no perishable or sort of foodstuffs hanging around. Then also with my daughter's daycare bag because she takes changes of clothes I'm going to take all that stuff out and I'm going to wash it and then I'm going to repack it with fresh stuff for the beginning of the year. Number six, stationery. This also accumulates. So pens. I get pens that accumulate in my house. I try and make sure I don't take any pens home from like work or from conferences or anything like that but my husband is notorious for bringing pens home so all the you know the corporate items with you know the brand on them the logo we end up with so many pens and we've also got one from our gardener we get them from the pharmacist sometimes we get calendars dropped off to us and even in our letterbox the local real estate agents will drop off a little calendar in your letterbox and just clear all that stuff out don't keep it Give it away if you know someone who can use it or recycle things like paper calendars. I either give the pens away to the op shop or I ask around and ask like if the daycare centers or the, the teachers need some pens. Otherwise I advertise them on freebie sites and with stationery it could be very mindful to say well I will use this one day but you know if you've got like 20 pens how long is it realistically going to take you to use all of those pens. They're just cluttering up space in the meantime and someone else could be using them. So you probably only need to keep two or three of those pens and get rid of the rest. And then with notebooks, recycle or shred anything that you don't need anymore. You don't need to keep old notebooks and planners unless you want to you know have a look at last year's goals if you have a planner I don't personally use one but if you do you may want to take some insights out of that and carry that over into your planning for 2019 but then get rid of the old planner so get rid of all that old stationery. Number seven old makeup now this would be easy or hard depending on how much makeup you have it's very easy to get rid of expired makeup if you need a bit more time to go through and decide what you do or you don't use of the stuff that's not expired, then that's fine. You can either do that at the same time or you can leave that for later if you're really short on time. But getting rid of things like expired makeup is really, really easy. Number eight, recipe books that you haven't used. So if you haven't used a recipe book in the past 12 months, if you haven't used it at all in the past year, then get rid of it. Now you may think, oh there's one or two recipes in that book that I really want to try. Simply take a photo of it, take a copy of it and then give the book away or sell it if you think it's worth selling. But just get rid of it. You do not need heaps and heaps of recipe books piling up in your kitchen. I've got a couple of really special Nigella Lawson books which I have quite a few favourite recipes that I probably, I have to admit, don't cook out of as much. But because she signed those books for me when I went to meet her at her book signing events then I've kept those books because they um, are quite treasured possessions of mine so I do keep those but most of my recipe books I've gotten rid of. I find that a lot easier and then I'm not keeping a whole lot of recipe books that I don't use. Number nine, I've actually mentioned this in my video that I did previously which I'll link up above which is what to declutter before Christmas and ideally you would declutter toys before Christmas but sometimes you don't always have the time so this is another opportunity because you've had probably had a lot of stuff come in for your kids over this time of year then it's a good opportunity to look at what you really think they're not playing with anymore and get rid of it. Another good tip for this is to just allocate a certain amount of space so a certain size cupboard or a certain size box in your child's room for toys and say okay if it doesn't all fit in here you've got to declutter something. Number 10 outgrowing kids clothes. This is really easy if your kids outgrow it or it's really 
torn or worn or really you know just unsalvageable get rid of it now if it's something that you can donate it's good to donate it but if it's something that has holes in it and lots of stains that you don't think anyone else will want then I take all that sort of stuff to H&M. If you've got an H&M store near you, they will actually take your clothes and they will send them to be recycled. And it doesn't have to be stuff that you have bought from H&M. So there you go, 10 things that you can declutter straight away before the new year. Nice and easy, just to get you started. Even if you try out one or two of these things, it'll make such a difference to your mood. I find that when I declutter things, I just feel so much lighter and I feel really organized. But the key is, when you've sorted out the stuff that you want to declutter, get it out of your home as soon as you can. Don't leave it lying around cluttering up space. I hope you found this video helpful. Give it a thumbs up if you did. And of course, remember to subscribe by clicking on my face below. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye.